Hello and welcome to the Northwest State Community College Financial Aid Night for the 2021-2022 aid year. My name is Isaac Benner and I am the Resource Counselor at Northwest State. And as a quick disclaimer, if you are intending to complete a FAFSA for any year other than 2021 or 2022, please contact the Financial Aid Office in case any changes have occurred. Without further ado, let's go over the basics of financial aid. What is financial aid? Financial aid is money that is used to help families pay for college or career schools. Financial aid includes grants, work study, loans, and scholarships to help make college or career school more affordable. What costs might I not anticipate? There are college expenses other than tuition, fees, and books. You can expect personal expenses to occur such as rent, gasoline, car maintenance, and other equipment that might be necessary for your field of study. All of these go into the cost of attendance for a college. We'll talk more about that in a later slide. Who is eligible for financial aid? In order to receive federal financial aid, the applicant must be a U.S. citizen or eligible non-citizen, have a high school diploma or equivalent, be registered for an eligible degree program at an eligible school, must have a valid social security number, males will need to be registered with the Selective Service, and some schools will have an academic progress policy which students must be required to maintain for, for good financial aid standing. How do I apply? FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Since it is a free application, never pay to submit your FAFSA. You want to make sure that you are on fafsa.gov and not .com or any other ending that might um, be different than .gov. Other sites will try to charge you a fee for completing your FAFSA application. You are also able to complete your FAFSA using your phone or tablet with the My Student Aid app. So step one, you will want to apply for your FSA ID. For both dependent students and independent students, you will need an FSA ID. If you are a dependent student, you will also need a parent to create an FSA ID. The FSA ID is your and your parent's electronic signature. Please make sure to write down your username, password, and security questions. Schools cannot help you retrieve this information. And as a reminder, never share your FSA ID with anybody. Step two, fill out your FAFSA online or on the mobile device. When you begin to fill out your FAFSA, you will want to have some documents and information with you to make the process go smoother. You'll want to have your and your parents' FSA IDs, your driver's licenses and social security numbers. You will also want to have 2019 W-2 and tax forms for anyone that has worked or filed taxes that year. You'll also want to have access to current bank statements and any business or investment information. And if applicable, you will need your alien registration or permanent resident card as well. Step three, determining dependency status, independent or dependent. To determine a student's dependency status, there are several yes or no questions on the FAFSA. If you can say yes to any of the following questions on this slide, you could qualify as independent. Being a dependent student means that you must use your parents' income information on the FAFSA, even if you do not live with them and you pay all of your own bills. Step four, tips for completing the FAFSA. We strongly encourage you to use the data retrieval tool when completing your FAFSA. It will help provide accurate data and it will save you data entry time. If you do happen to get flagged for verification, it will save in processing time. Note that if you do use the data retrieval tool, it will transfer, transfer all of your 2019 1040 federal tax income information, but it will not transfer your W-2 information. If you do get randomly selected for verification, 
you may still be requested to provide W-2s. Special Considerations If you are considered dependent by the FAFSA, but you have a unique situation where you cannot provide parent information, you may qualify for a dependency override. This would be a situation where you have no contact with your parents. Parents refusing to provide financial information does not qualify for the dependency override. It also may be that your household financial situation has changed since 2019. If that is the case and it has changed for the worse, you may be eligible to complete a special conditions. Step five, your FAFSA submitted, now what? Now that you've finished your FAFSA, a student aid report will be sent to each college you have listed on the FAFSA. That process takes about three to five business days. Each college will then determine what additional paperwork you will need and they will send it to you, typically by mail or email. The FAFSA is just the first step in getting financial aid, so be sure to turn in all of your college requirements on time. Now that we've gone through the steps, let's cover some information that we saw during the steps. What is Expected Family Contribution, or EFC? Expected fam Family Contribution is a number generated by your FAFSA information. This could include household size and income and can impact your eligibility for need-based aid. Both parent and student income are used to calculate the EFC. This number does not vary from college to college. How is financial aid determined? To determine your individual financial need, the cost of attendance is subtracted from your expected family contribution to find your financial need. The cost of attendance will vary from school to school and will include tuition, room and board, travel, and some of those other categories we mentioned before. For example, Northwest State does not have room and board, but we do include that on our cost of attendance because it does increase the cost of attendance, which is beneficial to the student. The higher the cost of attendance, the more aid each student is eligible to receive. Categories of financial aid. There are two categories of financial aid funding. The first is need-based aid, which includes grants, federal work study, federal direct subsidized loans, and some scholarships. The other category is non-need-based aid. This would include federal direct unsubsidized loans, the federal direct plus loans, and some scholarships. Scholarships are listed on both because each scholarship has their own different set of requirements. Grants. Grants are gift aid, which means you do not have to pay it back. There are different kinds of grants available, with the most common one being the Federal Pell Grant. In order to receive one of the federal grants offered, you must complete your FAFSA to determine if you're eligible. State Aid Grants and Opportunities. The state of Ohio invests significant resources in a wide variety of financial aid programs. Many types of grants and scholarships are available and awarded based on areas of study, academic merit, financial need, military status, and more. You can go to ohiohighered.org sgs for more information about each of the scholarships listed above. Scholarships. Scholarships are funds that do not have to be paid back and are usually awarded based on merit, skill, or unique characteristics. There are various sources of scholarships. Below are just a few of the sources that you can begin your scholarship search for. You also want to check with your college's financial aid office for any foundation or institutional scholarships. The Ohio Department of Education, any community, civic, or business organizations, such as the Moose, the Legion, Elks, churches, may also have scholarships available. You can also contact your high school guidance counselor, and they will be able to help you find any opportunities that you could potentially apply for scholarships for. NSCC Presidential and Honors Scholarships. Northwest State offers a few institutional scholarships specific to high school's seniors that are, that are entering their first year of college. We have the Presidential and the Honors Scholarship. 
the presidential scholarship pays full tuition, while the honor scholarship pays half tuition. Each one has their set of requirements that a student must meet in order to be eligible. If you have any questions about either of these scholarships, feel free to contact our Northwest State Admissions Office, and you can find their number on the screen. Student Loans Student loans are federal funds that can be borrowed to help pay for educational expenses. They must be paid back with interest after you graduate or stop attending. While loans are an investment into your future, be careful to borrow wisely so you don't have more debt than needed. Federal Work Study Federal Work Study is when you get a job on campus or in an approved community service position off campus and earn the amount of money that was awarded to you. When working a Federal Work Study job, you report that income separately on the FAFSA, which does not affect your expected family contribution. Advice for a successful college experience. To help make your college journey smooth and successful, we often advise students to make sure to apply for financial aid early. You'll also want to pay close attention to each college's deadlines. You'll want to regularly check your college email and or school portals. You'll also, if you're having any issues or any questions, be sure to reach out to any instructors or advisors that you've come into contact with. And every employee at each college is there to see you succeed, so don't be afraid to ask questions.